Hey everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to show you how I built this catio. This catio is an outdoor safe and closed space that lets our cats go outside but remain protected. Enjoy the outside experience a little bit but not have to worry about any threats from the wildlife around here. So this catio is 64 square feet. It's 8 feet on each side. It's built out of 4x4 and 2x4 pressure treated lumber with these nice easy to work with brackets in the corners and these star driven pen head screws that are very easy to work with. It's just that and a couple of bags of quick concrete and some corrugated roofing. Uh, it's a pretty easy build. It's a little bit of, a little bit tedious, takes a little bit of time, but it really opens up a great space for your cats. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about the design for a minute. I do most of my design work in Nutex Lightwave application here. What you're looking at is representing the ground underneath the catio. The structure will start with these corner posts that will be made out of 4x4 pressure treated lumber. These will start out at 10 feet long, um, but you'll note that the ones in the front on the right here are uh, a little bit shorter. This is to account for the downward sloping of the roof to drain accumulation such as rain or snow off of the roof. The next part of the structure will be regular 2x4s that are 8 feet long. These won't be cut, they'll, they'll stay 8 feet, and they will be held onto the corner brackets with these strong tie brackets that connect 4x4s to 2x4s. You can find these in the construction section or lumber section at your local big box store. These are great and easy to work with and they make building wood structures like this much more convenient. The next part of the build will on each wall see two modular sections. I decided to go with kind of a modular construction. Each of these will be four feet wide and about eight feet tall, a little bit shorter than eight feet tall. I'll be constructing them one at a time and then mounting them inside the structure and they have small 45 degree angle gussets in the corner and one middle shelf across each one. On the outside they'll have some sort of screen wire mesh. Um, that's obviously the main part that keeps the cat in. And then I decided on top of that to put some trim over them. Uh, it makes it just look quite a bit nicer in my opinion. And uh, this one single section will have a door framed out of it to allow one of us to go in and play with the cat or help it out if it's uh, in trouble or anything like that. Um, the roof section will be held up by half inch holes drilled through the top of each of the 4x4 posts with half inch galvanized bolts in there. Those are the corrosion resistant bolts. And parallel to each of the 4x4s are two 2x4s. And those are 10 foot 4x4s with one piece connecting them in the front to make up the main supporting structure of the roof. And then across each of those uh, perpendicular to them are the beams that the roof will actually be screwed to and these again are just 2x4s. Um, these are also 10 footers to give a little bit of an overhang on the roof and then a regular corrugated roof would be attached to that. So that's kind of a quick high level overview of the structure. Let's get started on the build. We started out by digging a couple holes for the corners and putting some scrap 4x4 pieces in there just to kind of lay out the outline of the catio and see how everything would fit and where it would end up going. The corner holes are only about a foot deep and these will host the 4x4 corner posts. In between them I just laid out some of the 2x4 pressure treated lumber that was 8 feet long and that's how we get the nice outline. I propped up a short piece in the middle here against the window and I'm taking one of the longer pieces I bought um, and laying it on top of that to hold it up and I'm going to level it out and screw it into the window sill. This is not going to be something that structurally keeps the catio together. This is only to hold the posts up while they set in the concrete and to make sure they're nice and referenced and square against the house itself. I'm using um, two and a half inch or three inch of the star driven pan head screws and I'm taking care to drive right in the middle here to make sure that I'm hitting the beams in between the windows. I'm only going to put three screws in this thing across the width of it 
taking care to level it along the way. I'm going to start with putting two of the rear posts up, the 4x4 posts that will hold the corners, but I'm going to mount them to that horizontal piece I just hung under the window. But those posts will each have holes drilled through them at the top to hold the roof beams. So I'm going to go ahead and make this piece out of scrap wood as a template to make sure all those holes are going to be in the same place. I clamped that reference piece against the 4x4 corner post here lining it up at the top and the sides and use that as the guide to drill straight through the entire post. This is a half inch hole and these are going to have half inch galvanized carriage bolts holding the roof beams up. I marked the 4x4 corner post at the bottom with that line around it indicating the minimum amount I want to ensure is submerged in the corner concrete. And above that I slid the 4x4 corner bracket post that will connect a 4x4 to 2x4s. Uh, these are strong tie corner brackets and you can typically find these in your local big box hardware store. Uh, they are great to work with. They get rid of a lot of the issues you come across in securing and fastening the corners of wooden structures. I definitely recommend checking these out and I am using the star drive pan head screws these are coated as well and will last outside just fine and the star drive makes them so much easier to work with than Phillips drives you barely need to apply any pressure to these at all and these are one and a half inch screws I'm using for these brackets the most annoying thing about these is getting the stupid stickers off I sprayed them with some acetone and scrubbed it with some steel wool that's the easiest solution I've found. You're also going to want to make sure you put all the screws in that these corner brackets require, especially on the rear two posts if you're putting your catio against your house, because you won't be able to access that side of these. Back outside now with the corner posts, I have the 4x4 corner bracket screwed in, and I made sure the hole is deep enough. I did screw a corner bracket into the beam that's underneath the window and I'm going to affix that to the corner post and that's going to what going to be what holds it in place. I'm taking care to make sure it's level and I'm kicking some dirt in there after making fine adjustments. This uh, leveling and verti ensuring verticality part of this is going to be one of the most important parts of your entire build. Everything you do here is going to have repercussions on the rest of the structure so you do want to make sure you get this right. Here's just a quick close-up of that angle bracket that's connecting the beam underneath the window to the corner post. Here is Mao Cho, one of the soon-to-be residents of the catio, checking out what all the commotion is all about out here. Very intrigued by what's going on. I then moved on to the other rear post Starting with my reference piece, I start the hole for the half-inch galvanized bolt that's going to hold the roof beams in. I just started the hole with this and went the rest of the way through without that piece and did a pecking motion to make it easier to clear out the wood as I was drilling through. I then put the 4x4 corner bracket on and again put all the screws in on this. You want to take care to make sure you're orientation for this bracket is correct with respect to the hole that you just drilled at the top. In my case that half inch galvanized bolt is going to be going side to side. I'm using a scrap piece of wood to line up this angle bracket that's going to hold the corner post to the beam under the window. Back outside with the other corner post I made sure it was level in both dimensions and lined it up with the bracket I just installed. However, I realized I couldn't access the back side of this to screw those brackets in. I decided then to frame the whole back side of this and attach it to the house. So I grabbed the horizontal pieces that would connect the corner posts and I put some nice quick pocket holes in these. These are holes that are recessed at a 45 to 60 degree angle, but they don't go all the way through and they allow you to kind of hide a screw in there that still protrudes out the end. Um, I'm mainly using this because this is a great way to pull the wood together before you screw in the rest of the screws for those corner brackets. 
I'm also realizing that I won't have access to any of those screws on the back side here, so I'm really going to need to frame this whole back wall up and put all the screws that are necessary in it before I even raise it up. So I removed the first vertical post that I took care to line up and level and make sure it was square and started building the frame out. It's getting late and starting to get dark, but I really wanted to finish this up before the day ended. With some help, I returned to it the next day. Now all of the brackets are attached and all the screws are in, so there's not going to be any missing components that we don't have access to. We took a lot of care in digging out the holes properly and making sure everything was square and vertical and level. When everything looked good, finally, I screwed it into the corner brackets that are on the beam underneath the windowsill. With that, we successfully hit the first major milestone in the construction of the catio, and would now move on to the forward two corner posts. Although this corner post was screwed into the horizontal beam under the window on the house, it could still swing forward and back. So again, I took some care to make sure it was vertical with respect to the house, filling in and digging out as necessary before I poured any of the quick setting concrete into the hole. Once I was satisfied with the alignment of the corner post, I went ahead and added the quick setting concrete into the hole. I added the water and then double checked with the level afterwards. I moved to the other corner post, again making sure it's vertical front to back and vertical side to side, and added the con quick setting concrete and then the water, and again double checked the verticality after mixing the water. The results looked pretty good, so we let it sit for the day to dry and cure and would come back tomorrow. We moved on then to the front two corner posts, as before pre-attaching the strong tie corner brackets at both the top and the bottom with all the screws in them, and put them in the holes and put the horizontal beams in the brackets to just to make sure everything looked good and seemed to line up properly. It became pretty clear that one of these two holes was not quite deep enough, as the level when placed on the horizontal beam connecting the front two corner posts was clearly out of level. So I dug the hole deeper until it looked good and checked the alignment again. I started to get the horizontal pieces ready with some pocket holes again. And here you can see how the screws go into the pocket holes to get an idea of how they work. The ground path between these rear and front corner posts needed to be dug out some more and leveled out. Uh, after doing that, we put the post back in the hole and checked the alignment and started working on leveling and squaring this post up again. I used some scrap pieces of wood clamped to the corner post and touching the ground, hitting the ground at an angle to prop it upright as I used the level to make sure it was vertical both side to side and front to back. While I was making fine adjustments, I would kick or tap the ground around the base of the piece of wood that's propping the corner post up until it looked good. And squared, I checked the squareness with the back and used that pocket screw to attach the horizontal beam to the corner post. I moved on to the other front corner piece and went through the same procedure, propping it up with some scrap pieces. These were one by twos and about four feet long clamped to the corner post and sitting at an angle with respect to the ground both to the side and front to back. I checked and rechecked the level, the vertical forward and back and side to side on the corner post, and also checked the level of the horizontal beam connecting the front post to the rear post and the squareness of that horizontal beam to the back side frame. There'll be lots of fine adjustments here, so take your time and do this right. Make sure that corner post is vertical both side to side and front to back. The horizontal piece is level and square with the back. The next piece was the lower horizontal piece connecting the two vertical posts on either side in the front. As long as the horizontal piece is going from the rear post to the front post, both came out level and square, this should be pretty level and square as well, but of course it's always good to double and triple check all this and make any fine adjustments as necessary. Once you have that front lower horizontal piece connecting the two front corner posts and everything is looking square and level, 
go ahead and fasten that in and things are a lot easier after that. You can start putting the upper horizontal connecting pieces into the brackets that are already in place. Screw everything in and everything should stay relatively level and square. It's good to keep checking it along the way before you pour the concrete for the front two posts though and make any adjustments again as necessary. I was pretty happy with the way things were looking so I decided to move forward with pouring the concrete. Emptying a bag again of the quick setting concrete in both the front corner posts you definitely want to wear some breathing protection here as this stuff's pretty nasty to breathe in. I went ahead and added the concrete to both, uh, checked the level again, and added the water and let it sit and cure. Now that the cubic skeleton of the catio was completed, it was time to move on to the walls. I would be making the walls out of kind of modular segments. Each one would be four feet wide and eight feet tall. Since the catio is framed by two by fours that are eight feet long, it makes fitting these and measuring these pretty straightforward. There would be six of these modules, two on each wall. None would be needed in the back, of course, because that sits adjacent to the house. And one of the modules would have an extra framing section for a door to walk into the catio. I started out by cutting out the base and the sides for the first modular insert. I'm doing this work on a four foot by eight foot workbench with an integrated table saw and compound miter saw. I have a different video detailing that build if you'd like to check that one out. It'll be linked here in the comments and at the end of this video. The height of the sides of these modules isn't quite 8 feet, so I'm cutting about 6 inches off of each of these side pieces. I then cut out a bunch of 1.5 inch spacers. These would hold up various pieces, such as the gussets, as I screwed them in. My 4x8 workbench made for a really convenient jig or fixture for lining these frame pieces up for each module and screwing them together. And of course I'm still using here the long pan head star driven screws. However, before I screwed the sides and the tops together to make the frame for each module, I did a quick fit test of them, although I didn't get it in a video. You can see it depicted here with these white clamps I drew in. The side pieces clamped to the side and the top and bottom clamped to the frame also just to make sure all the pieces are going to fit before I screw everything together. You can see here the corner gussets cut at 45 degree angles on both sides popped into the corner and sitting on top of those small spacers that I cut. I'm driving in the star driven pan head screws from each side and these are two and a half or three inch screws to get a good grip into the side piece and the gusset. The next step after the fit test and assembly is to apply the metal screen that will protect your cat from the actual outdoors and keep it contained in the catio. We found this metal wire screen at a local hardware store. This is chicken wire that's been plastic coated to provide extra corrosion resistance. We started out at the bottom and stapled it along the bottom edge, pulled it toward the middle, and then stapled it in the middle all the way up to the top and stapled it there. We clamped it along the way and tried to pull it tight. After each row was stapled, we tapped each staple down with the hammer to make sure it was as flush and as tight as possible. You want to make sure when you're stapling the screen to leave enough of the screen for the staple to grab onto without the screen being able to slip out. After the bottom, middle, and top were pulled tight and stapled, we moved on to the sides of the screen. We started by stapling along one side only and then pulling it tight on the other side to make sure the screen itself was pulled taut across the frame. The best method we found after some experimentation to do this was to grab the screen with the claw edge of a hammer and use it to pry the screen down while another person does the stapling. This actually worked really well and made the screen nice and tight and look great. I didn't really like the look of leaving the stapled edges of the screen exposed to the outside like that. And I was trying to find something a little more aesthetically appealing. 
I ended up going with these 2x2 pressure treated banister supports and rip cutting them on my table saw down the middle. So it kind of made two 1x2 pressure treated boards. The wire screen had quite a lot of overhang after pulling it tight, so I'd just grab a pair of pliers and walk up and down each edge and trim it. The trim is pretty straightforward, leaving the pressure treated side out. I cut a couple of them to exactly 4 feet wide and used those to cover the bottom, middle, and top, and then just cut the appropriate lengths for the sides. There's no fancy bevel cutting or anything like that on these, but just adding the trim made the outside of this look a million times better. The trim was fastened in with those star-driven pan head screws about one and a half inches long, and the trim served the additional purpose of helping to retain the staples and hold the screen in place. A close-up shot of the corner here shows how everything goes together and really helps show how that trim makes a big difference on the visual appeal of these panels. With that, it was time to pick the module up, bring it outside, and install it in the skeleton of the catio. Since these panels were fit tested before I did the final assembly of them, I was pretty confident they were going to fit well. We brought them outside and hung them into the skeletal frame of the catio and clamped them down, and they did fit quite nicely still. I secured the wall panel with the three inch star driven torque panhead screws through the sides into the four by four corner post, putting about four in on each side. Two more of these screws were placed both on the bottom and the top, driven through the horizontal frame piece of the modular wall section straight into the vertical 2x4 that made up the skeleton frame above or below it. We hung the next section of the wall in and again clamped it in place to get ready for securing it with the fasteners. These 3 inch star driven torque pan head screws are still quite easy to drive right through the 2x4 making up the wall segment into the 2x4 making up the skeletal frame of the catio. With three of them actually on the top and the bottom. It's even easy to drive them upside down vertically. We started this part of the assembly with one wall segment in each side of the wall. Those wall segments were, as mentioned, fit tested before being finally assembled and before being clamped and screwed into the skeletal framework of the catio. With those one wall segments installed in each side of the wall, we fit tested the second segment in each side as well leaving the first one installed in there. This made sure that everything fit properly after both segments were in place. And some of these definitely required some additional adjustments, maybe from a slight misalignment in the ins installment or some settling or some sagging of the two by fours. Some fine adjustments were made with a rubber mallet. And again, they were clamped in place and fastened securely. With all the wall sections now completed, it was time to move on to the last one, which would host the door. The wall segment which hosts the door is built the same way as the other wall segments. We started out with the framework, the 4x8 structure, and then added 2x4s inside to form a frame around where the door will go. Both the horizontal 2x4 and these two vertical 2x4s are held in with two of the 3 inch pan head star driven screws on each side. I built a little test section out of some scrap pieces of the frame and the door with the hinge using the 2x4, the metal screen, and the trim just to make sure everything would open up properly and appear to fit fine. With the corner gussets added and a couple extra spacers in the middle to hold the framework around the door in place, I added some spacers and started framing out the door itself. 
You can see some of the spacers sticking up here. And then I clamped them to hold them rigidly in place while I lined everything up. With the four pieces making up the door frame in place, I got some help and we lifted the rest of the module wall section frame up and away from the door frame so we could add the rest of the pieces and access the outside to drive the screws in. I propped up the corner gussets again with those small spacers I cut earlier and drove two screws in from each side into the gussets. We also added a piece in the middle that would line up to the two middle pieces that were added in the larger outside of the frame to help add some structural integrity to the door. This middle piece would also host the latch that keeps the door locked and closed. With all the sections and corner gussets and all the framework installed, the door and the surrounding frame looks like this. We added the chicken wire to the outside using the same process as before, pulling it tight and stapling it down. The section covering the door obviously is separated from the sections covering the rest of the frame. We next propped the door up at its approximate maximum angle on some temporary framework and used that to hold everything in place while we added the hinges. With the hinges in place we tested opening and closing the door and it was actually a little bit tight and about an eighth of an inch had to be trimmed off of that horizontal bracing piece on the right hand side in the middle of the frame. But after that it worked fine. We added the handle and the closing bolt latch. Uh, the bolt latch's height was about the same exact thickness as the trim and the 2x4s on their side. So there wasn't a lot of room for those screws to hold that in. I ended up drilling some pilot holes through the trim to pass the screws through that and used longer screws driven in at an angle pointing toward the center so they'd go all the way down into that 2x4 behind the trim. And finally the door with all the trim and the latch and the handles in place looks pretty good. Again the outer 2x4s that first made up the frame of this section were fit tested before any final fasteners were added. So I was pretty confident everything was going to fit pretty well. And installing this door section ended up being pretty straightforward as before. Lifting it into place, tapping it into the final position with the rubber mallet, clamping it, and then securing it with the fasteners. We were really happy with the way that came out and think it looks great and works really well. With the walls and the door all done now, we could move on to the ceiling and the roof. Before we put the door in, I added some interior trim out of some cedar planks used for exterior fencing. This uh, trim lined the inside of the skeleton against the odd spaces just to make sure there was nowhere that a cat could sneak out. I was originally going to leave the ceiling open and screen in the gap under the slanted roof but I wanted the cats to be able to check it out since I had all the walls up, so I decided to throw some 2x4 beams across the top and put some 4x8 OSB over that. I thought that actually worked pretty well and I decided to keep this design instead of trying to fill in those odd shaped gaps underneath the angled roof. There's a bit of a gap around the OSB, but it's only about one inch wide and just barely large enough for a cat to stick his paw through. With that looking good and closed in, I thought it was time to let the cats give it a quick test run. It took Macho here a little while to get brave enough to venture out into the structure, but he took a pretty quick liking to it. He spent a little time exploring before getting right down to business and scratching and climbing all over it. This other one here is Louie, and uh, he's a lot more timid and would take a couple days to uh, venture out there and hang out outside. Macho's quite the climber and has gotten stuck in trees a couple times back when he was allowed outside. So I built this nice little climbing stack for him out of firewood and another 2x4. And he never once used it, so don't make something like this. I got started next on the interior shelving for the cats. Since all the modular wall sections were 4 feet by 8 foot, most of the shelving would also be 4 foot wide. I started out by cutting 
some four foot long sections out of one by five pressure treated board. The shelf supports were made from two by two pressure treated lumber. These are the vertical slats often used in exterior deck railing. Two horizontal pieces would be cut out to match the width of the three or four bores making up the shelf with a couple extra pieces that would serve as angled gussets holding the shelf up. I quickly cut the ends at 45 degrees on the supporting pieces for each shelf. I drilled some pocket holes at a 45 degree angle to that so they would go straight into the support beams or straight up into the beams holding the shelves. And then preset some of those star driven pan head screws into those holes. And here you can see approximately how they'll go together. This first shelf I made four boards wide is the first landing spot for the cat as soon as it comes out of the cat door. This one is made flush with that very first 2x4 that I screwed into the window frame up against the wall that's horizontal. The rest of the shelves would only be three boards wide. And here you can clearly see how those brackets hold up the shelves with the bottom screws going directly into whatever vertical beam is right behind them. These shelves were quick and easy to make and pretty sturdy so it was easy to make a bunch of them to fill the catio with. For areas that had other structures in them such as a climbing wall the cat never uses and wouldn't hold a full width four foot wide shelf I simply added one of those two by twos right in the middle vertically and attached the supports to that. We put lots of shelves in at different heights on each wall so the cats could jump between them and climb up and down between shelves and they of course liked the highest ones the most. With the interior mostly done it was time to move on to the roof. The roof is supported by four 2x4s that are bolted to the top of the 4x4 corner posts. I started with the first beam which already had one hole drilled in one end and clamped it in place to drill the hole through on the other end and use this as a template to make the rest of the beams. The holes in the 2x4s are offset a little bit, they're not in the middle of the beam so that these beams stick up a little bit over the top of the 4x4s. The hole needed to be reamed out a little bit with a spade bit before the galvanized bolt fit properly. The holes in these parallel 2x4s needed to be offset because the beams that will support the corrugated roof will sit flat over them. If they're not offset like this, they'll actually hit the top of the 4x4 posts. I did the two on the other side the same way, and then put a beam up in front of all four connecting them for decoration and to hold a gutter in case I wanted to mount one on under the roof. And the next part were the cross rafters that held the roof up. I marked these with lines approximately where they would intersect the parallel angled pieces on either side that support the roof. These started out as 10 foot 2x4s and they ended up with about a 6 inch overhang on either side. I put up 6 of them equally spaced. And of course the last part is the actual roofing material. These corrugated panels are made from fiberglass that are quite durable and long lasting and inexpensive. I bought the longer versions of these panels so I wouldn't have to buy as many of them and the excess which was cut off is going to overlap the roof at the top. These corrugated roofing panels use a special type of screw to mount in. It's a hex head driven screw that's self tapping which also has a rubber washer in it. And you actually want to drive these screws in not at the bottom of the troughs but at the top the peak of each corrugation. This is because when water is draining down these, you don't want them to collect around the screws that are drilled in at the bottom of the troughs and then leak. You also don't want to over tighten those screws because you'll deform the corrugation. To screw these down, you're obviously going to need to get up and on top of your roof here. To do that with these corrugated panels, you want to lay some scrap plywood or some OSB over it to spread your weight out amongst multiple panels. You probably don't want to stand up on top of this, but I used two 
scrap pieces of plywood kneeling on them, and switch between them as I moved along. This was a pretty sturdy roof, and it had no problem supporting my weight while I was up there, although it was a little bit bouncy. Since I've made it, it's already made it through a couple of heavy wind, rain, and hail storms. Although we don't get a lot of snow here, I expect it to stand up to that just fine too. And finally we added some outdoor lighting to the catio, giving it a nice, elegant evening look. Well, that is it for this catio build. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making this video and sharing this process with you. I made this video about a year after the catio was completed. Uh, the cats go out there all the time. Uh, the black and white one uses it at least two to three times a day. Uh, their favorite pastime is just hanging out up high here and enjoying cool summer breezes and watching the birds. Well, I know this is a long video, but I hope to have given you a lot of useful information if you're considering building a catio yourself. If you did like this video, please hit that like and comment button. The YouTube algorithm does not like long-form videos, but I think it's the best place to put up informative videos like this, so I hope you appreciate it. If you have any questions, please feel free to stick them in the comments. Thank you all. I will leave you with a little bit of extra cat videos here.